say, intentionally flowing with it. Mm-hmm. I, lo- I love that saying. They say the intellect is just a drop in the sea of consciousness, and that in, in yeah. truth we're these vast beings. And, and I know they've proven that the female brain actually processes things much, much faster. It's more emotionally uh, driven, so it's moving and processing much, much faster. And you know, men are uh-huh. still trying to figure out the last, the last thing that happened. And the women have gone on to three or four more. You know, <laughs> so and so uh, yeah. it, that yeah. seems to be what's going to be happening here is because uh, when we get into the higher bodies, which are more emotional bodies. Uh, uh, they they process much faster, and so we have to get, you know, in touch with what they call the heart. And and my my understanding of that is is your soul sits right next to the heart, and that's your connector to the source. And your intellect is the like the disruptor. It, it's always trying to be in control and and uh, manipulate everything. And it's very very clever, but it's not wise. You know, the real wisdom is to turn the intellect over and, and have it become more of a servant, you know, than a master. It makes a very poor master, but... Yeah, yeah. Or or not let the ego be the master, I think, is the... Exactly. Uh, uh, I think is the key thing. Yeah, but the semantics and words are tough, you know, but I, I think most people yeah. get, you know, what we're saying. That, yeah. I think especially the ones that are processing on the higher levels or understanding all of this, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't the intellect of probably going. What did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, uh, yeah. It, it's it's going to be interesting. You know, this all makes sense to me. It it fits into quantum physics and particle physics, basically. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and and it fits the mind calendar fits into this progression. You know, this this uh, uh, progression into higher consciousness and energy or whatever or or a higher dimension, even as you could even say that. So it, it it's all yeah. tying in together. Yeah, um, um, you know, in my my most recent book, the Purposeful Universe, I uh, developed the the whole tree of life model uh, for uh, for the evolution of the universe, um, and uh, which which is the tree of life. Then it is a uh, are uh, you might say uh, perpendicular light structures that exist on several different levels of the universe. So it's a cosmic level is the highest, then it goes down to galactic, uh, solar, uh, planetary, human, and down to cells and atoms. And uh, uh, all of these, uh, they 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 can undergo quantum shifts. It's it's you know it's a model that is consistent with uh, the quantum theory model, and the shifts are coordinated; they are entangled, and so uh, whenever there is a cosmic shift in in like when the seventh day begins, it is like a, a, a shift that ultimately is brought about on the cosmic level on the on the by the Hunab Ku, and then but then. All of these uh, uh, levels below are entangled and, and in resonance with one another uh, in a way that is still maybe a little bit beyond us, uh, but it's just a fact that that's how it works. And uh, and, and so uh, the whole universe is, is uh, all the levels of these uh, trees of life that exist. They're all connected, and they all go back to this uh, a single source of the cosmic tree of life, uh, the Hunabku, and uh, uh, in that sense, there is no separation. In other words, there is no there is no part of the universe uh, that is not evolving according to the coordinated and synchronized plan that the Mayan calendar is an uh, expression of. So that's how I see it. It definitely is coming all together now. It, it, it seems like everybody has bits and pieces, and then and we almost had to wait for for the physics and the science end of it to catch up. To yeah. understand, you know what the ancients have been telling us for such a long time, and you know I, I'm amazed by how many uh, uh, Nobel Prize winners actually got their information from ancient Vedic scriptures and things of that nature. And they well, wrote, a, yeah. wrote an article on it, and uh, and uh-huh. get an, 
a Nobel Prize, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Read the Vedic scriptures. And that's the <laughs> yeah. recipe. Yeah. Yeah, like the super string theories in there. Uh, I think one of them wrote a, a theory about how bacteria are more prolific, you know, during the moon cycles and, and uh, different stages in the moon cycles and things. And he got a, a, a Nobel Prize. And a lot of this just is Ayurvedic medicine. You know, it's been around yeah, yeah. forever. But uh, yeah. that brought it brought it to the West, and now they got a a Nobel Prize. You know, I thought that's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, we'll catch up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's what's uh, funny is you have these these scientists, you know, with the you know the PhDs and the other stuff, and and I, I find that uh, amazing that they they fight this tooth and nail, and <laughs> and they they want everything packaged in a fit. You know, you can't prove it to them unless you show them something physical. Yeah, but but these are non-physical events that we're talking about, and frequencies and energies, and 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 they are measurable now. They do have ways of measuring some of these, these yeah. fre- frequencies and things like that. But they're most of them are still stuck in this old Newtonian program, you know, of uh, you know waiting for the apple to hit the ground, you know, to, to explain it within that program somehow. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think in, in, in the purposeful universe, I mean, I, I'm a PhD of physical biology myself, mm-hmm. so I, I really do know where, where they are coming from. Uh, and I've been, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I was originally mentored by a, 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 one of the people in the Nobel committees in Stockholm, and so I, I, I know this world. And, uh, and uh, I, I think the, 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 the physical evidence is already there. It's not that that is missing. And I, and I did my best to, to present a coherent view in this book, The, the Purpose for the Universe. But that is just like a dogma or like a rule. If you're going to play in our, uh, what is called sandbox, the sandbox called the academic institutions, <laughs> then you cannot mention um, anything that uh, is spiritual or is godlike or something like that it's just you're not in our sandbox if you are uh, mentioning these things and it's 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 just the way it works if you're a nobel prize winner yes you you have sort of uh, climbed uh, in their view to a level where you can be allowed to speak about these things but uh, as long as you are on on a more ordinary uh, level uh, you will be um, you will be ostracized if you are starting to bring in things like that, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I think that's sort of also matched by certain uh, religious groups that would basically uh, 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 saying you know setting up a series of dogmas of <laughs> around what they believe to be the Christian message and so forth that would not in the same thing you know you, if you want to play in our in our um, uh, part of the woods you know you you better follow these rules and and uh, otherwise we, you're not going to play and uh, that that re- remains these kind of uh, division lines or 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 or, or even uh, 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 berlin walls they 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 still go through our society uh, and our civilization i i should say um, and uh, but I do think that it, it, it really is the, the purpose of these upcoming waves to to sort of loosen up these uh, division lines, uh, these walls of, of non uh, uh, communication, and uh, uh, and that's what we will see fairly quickly happen in in, mm-hmm. in the time ahead. So so the seventh day is like the kickoff on November third. For the yes. uh, for the eighth wave of the the galactic wave coming in, and not coming in, but completing itself. So, oh, completing uh, itself. Okay. Yes. So we we are going into the final energy of a wave that has been operated since early 1999. Mm-hmm. So that but, would be ushering in the ninth wave as well, wouldn't it? Or, or well, it's the the ninth wave will start ma- March 9th, 2011. And okay. that will be that will be developing on top 
of the foundation provided by the eighth wave. By the eighth wave. Right. Yeah. So the, 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 the way this Mayan calendar system works is that um, it's not that one wave, first there's one wave and then that stops and the new wave comes. Mm -hmm. That's the sort of kind of li linear thinking that, that many people are, are addicted to. But the Mayan calendar is more like uh, the, the, uh, each wave comes to, mm, comes to a point of fruition. Uh, when the fruit is coming of, of the wave. And we're now coming to the, the point in time when the fruit of the current wave, the eighth wave, will start to uh, be clear. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's only that fruit that will put the seeds for the new ninth wave to, to, to begin. Mm -hmm. and, and, but they're all going on. It's not like they're stopping and then the other comes after. No. They, they're creating like a pyramid where each level is activated on top of the foundation provided by the uh, the lower waves. It does seem there's a, a uh, you know, I don't want to say a time, but there is a sequence, sequential event happening that there's, you know, a sequence of these waves or, or an evolutionary process. But it, it also seems we can't say it's a time because time collapses and things as you're saying, uh, become, what, 20 times uh, shorter. Faster, yeah. The, the, yeah. the manifestation between, the manifestation time is 20 times shorter than it used to be. So Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's really, yeah, you got to get, get your mind outside that linear box to, to grasp this. Yes. Yes. You know, yeah. I think about it, too, is that there's some people that are, are, you know, way in the future already, and they're already experiencing some of this because their yeah. consciousness is already attuned right. yeah. to the future. And there's some people that are still in the dark ages. You know, their yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. is, yeah. is in the it, past. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. There are people that are still very much in this law-oriented patriarchal mentality, right, wrong, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, sharp division lines. And, and that's, yeah, as you're saying, that, that's Middle Ages. Uh, uh, they, even though they may dress a little bit differently, the mindset may still be in that time, in that time frame. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I know one of the teachers I studied with, she, she told me, she says, you know, before, uh, before you answer any question, say, I don't know. <laughs> and and I, I go, why does she want me to do that? And she goes, because your ego jumps in first. And she said, she said you have to dismiss the ego, and then the yeah. real information, then the real information can come through. Yeah. And I've noticed that when I do that, I hesitate for a second, and I think I've got it all down. And then I go, okay, I don't, I don't have a clue like this. And all of a sudden, the next wave of energy comes through, or the consciousness comes through, and then it does, you know, have the answer. Yes. Yeah. That would, yeah. Be, no, that would be some good for these people that are in the dark ages to kind of let go of is realize, okay, I'm in dark dark ages. I don't have a clue. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait and stop holding on to the old paradigm and the old program and and uh, I'm just gonna ho hesitate just you know for a second dismiss yeah. the old program and be open to a new program. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard about that, and I've also heard. I, and, and not that I practice this really, but I've heard that there is some kind of a Buddhist uh, walking meditation where you sort of just you just repeat in your head, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're really getting into that. I don't